Welcome to the world of real entertainment. Please stay tuned at the end of the program for previews of more exciting home videos. Now, enjoy the show. On a festive day at the Paris Air Show, a sleek Soviet MiG-26 attack jet performs for a huge crowd of thrilled spectators. As the test pilot lifts his 20-ton machine into the clear skies, news cameras capture the aerial ballet. All seems well, until suddenly one engine spits fire. The pilot fights the controls, trying to force the plane away from the crowd. Finally, he blasts himself into the sky, too late for his parachute to fully open. Despite his fall, the pilot survives without serious injury. As we can see, he remains with the craft and catapults himself away at the last possible second. At Ramstein, Germany, news cameras roll again as an Italian stunt team streaks in perfect unison towards the worst air show tragedy in history. One of the three doom jets hurtles into the crowd, killing over 40 helpless fans. The catastrophe forces officials to set future aerial displays further away from the public. With official photographers recording the event, two Kuwaiti pilots begin their maneuver. Spectators notice that their formation is tighter than normal. Suddenly, disaster. Tragically, three of the four crew members are killed. In Albany, New York, home video cameras capture another unforeseeable disaster. The Canadian Air Force puts his massive CH-125 Sea King rescue chopper through its paces. Although crew members appear calm, the chopper starts showing signs of trouble. Those recording the event are suddenly shocked by what happens next. The chopper traps all five crewmen. Everybody stay down. Freeing himself, the crew chief barely manages to scramble out of the wreckage. Rescuers finally drag the rest to safety. Three of the Sea King's crew require hospitalization for their injuries, but thanks to the bravery of the rescuers, there are no fatalities. At this tiny airstrip, a cameraman is filming when veteran pilot Scott Gordon develops a problem. The wheel bay under the plane's right wing is frozen shut. Well, you just see, see what it looked like to you. Scott's friend Jim Mosier devises a desperate plan. It calls for Scott to land the plane's right wing down on a speeding flatbed trailer, which will act as a third wheel for the landing. 
a shift in the wind or in the velocity of either vehicle could throw them onto the runway. Jim slams the accelerator to the floor and Scott floats down just above stall speed. But the truck can't keep up. Still trapped in the sky, Scott okays a new plan. A desperation move that hinges on the courage of aircraft mechanic Joe Lippo. Joe gathers speed in a faster car and tries to flick open a lever under the plane's wing. Then he must literally hang from the lever to unjam the wheel. Inches above him, Scott feathers the controls to keep his 1,700-pound aircraft from crushing Joe. Altitude, seven feet. The plane hovers inches above his head, but Joe doesn't flinch. Incredibly, Joe's plan works. The grateful pilot's nerves hold steady. To judge the danger of Joe's mission, take another look. Today, Scott Gordon indulges his love of flying by piloting passenger jets for a major airline. The quest for breakneck speeds assumes another form here as giant race boats streak across Florida's choppy waters. A news helicopter keeps pace. The aerodynamics of the hyperactive's triple hull lifts the craft well above the waves. Suddenly, the bow nose is too high. Both men suffer multiple injuries, but survive. Drag boat fanatics always face grave risks, which cameras often captured. At 100 miles per hour, even the calmest water feels like concrete. In these scenes, we witness what can happen during high-speed aquatics. But sometimes, the danger extends beyond the water. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Davis in the war party. They, as we explained earlier... Miraculously, all spectators and the driver survived the crash. ...to the mishap area. As you saw, ladies and gentlemen, the... the but speed is not the only danger on the water. As this cameraman's video footage proves, a giant trawler, blinded by a pea soup fog, has just plowed into a small fishing boat, the Margaret Jane, which rapidly takes on water. Many of the 18 fishermen manage to find life jackets and dive into the icy waters. The stronger swimmers try desperately to distance themselves from the sinking ship's whirlpool, but the giant vacuum sucks them under. Only those with flotation devices resurface. Lifeboats navigate blindly, guided only by the sound of faint cries cutting through the wall of fog. Most of the fishermen survive, but four of their comrades go down with the ill-fated Margaret Jane. Off the Australian coast, a news chopper can only watch as this man lives a sailor's worst nightmare. With engine failure and shredded sails, he flounders helplessly in giant swells. A 30-foot wave slams the sloop, sweeping the skipper overboard and into the deadly surf. Incredibly, he manages to claw his way back onto the boat.
Meanwhile, a Coast Guard rescue cutter struggles bravely against vicious waves, but water douses its engine and it too must fight for its life. tosses the cutter like a bathtub toy. Now the would-be rescuers themselves need rescuing. A Coast Guard chopper must maneuver close enough for them to grab the skids. The danger lies in colliding with the unpredictable boat or the men themselves. Finally, the exhausted skipper reaches safety while the chopper returns one more time for the last crewman. local cameraman shoots this footage of an ignited oil tank in southern Texas as it spews a 3,000 degree fireball into the air. Firemen finally win their battle against the flames and an eerie calm descends on the scene. The fire seems out. The firefighters gear down and prepare to leave. Then a red-hot piece of metal combusts with a still-boiling fumes. The entire tank explodes in a raging fireball that sends firemen and onlookers running for their lives. Although no one is seriously injured, the explosion scorches several firemen with second-degree burns. As a Honolulu news team films from high above, another oil refinery reminds us of the awesome power of fire. When flames erupt, the entire harbor is threatened. With courage and skill, firefighters bring the still blazing inferno under control. But when Kenneth Yamamoto and his fellow firemen move to squelch the flames, Yamamoto has no idea what awaits him. As Yamamoto and his partner brave the searing heat, the fire suddenly leaps out of control. Reacting instinctively, his fellow fireman smothers a scorching flame. In replay, Yamamoto dives under the layer of water and foam. His training makes the difference between life and death. On this quiet Boston street, police discover a pipe bomb in front of the Arab Anti-Discrimination League offices. Experts secure the bomb with a 20-foot line, guided gingerly, and suspended in the city's mobile anti-demolition unit. A daring news cameraman is on hand to film the hazardous procedure. The pipe is large enough to hold plastique explosives that may look and feel like silly putty, but can detonate with a force of dynamite.
Demolition expert Randy LaMattina prepares to explode the bomb in an empty field. First, he must remove the bomb from the container, but the explosive has wedged itself into the canister and cannot be removed by pulling on its tow line. Unfortunately, the only alternative is to remove the bomb by hand. Though receiving deep shrapnel wounds, a concussion and multiple facial lacerations, Randy survives the blast. Some sports may appear reckless, even dangerous, but these rugged midget cars in Adelaide, Australia, routinely crash without causing much harm. What do I tell you about touch and there goes another one. Ironically, a slower pace sometimes produces the most dangerous results, as this videotape shows us. With his horrified wife watching from the stands, rookie Linton Connors absorbs a rear-end collision that ruptures his fuel line. A relatively minor accident turns into a grisly nightmare. Connor's seatbelt locks him in the flames, but trained rescue crews expect to douse the fire within seconds and get him out. Risking his own life, driver Ted Alabacos, dressed in blue, rushes to the increasingly frantic rescue effort. The heat throws him back. In the commotion, a vehicle tries to push Connors away from the fuel spill, but almost crushes one of the rescue workers. Then the situation worsens. The massive iron bars designed to protect Connors become a cage, roasting him alive. Alabacos tries again in a desperate attempt to release his friend. He finally locates the safety buckle. Connors finally emerges after being burned alive for nearly two full minutes. Escaping with his life, he is taken to Royal Adelaide Hospital to begin months of treatment and rehabilitation for severe burns. Like Ferris wheels everywhere, this one in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, promises the thrill of getting above it all. By pure coincidence, a vacationer's video camera captures an unforgettable event. A young girl has been tossed from her car in an accident caused by another passenger. She dangles dangerously high above the crowd. <laughs> Meanwhile, two park employees risk their lives to come to her aid. The park workers finally disengage the injured girl and ultimately lead her to safety. <laughs> 
Since 1987, cameras have recorded many of the two million Americans taking these leaps of faith. For example, Kathy McCollum gave her husband David his first bungee jump as their wedding anniversary present. David's entire family watches as a crane pulls him 180 feet in the air. This will be his first jump. Although he shatters his left leg, David is lucky to survive. In the rugged Chugash Range outside Valdez, Alaska, several cameras film the World Extreme Skiing Championships. Garrett Bartlett shows plenty of guts and confidence as he challenges dizzying heights and stomach-churning drops. But then nature strikes back. Oh, no! Bartlett survives this fall, but hypothermia remains a life-threatening danger. The steep slopes prevent the emergency chopper from reaching him. Paramedic Tim Coughlin sets and splints his broken leg while others try to stop his blood loss. You felt any other pain since we... Nah, I think it's just my leg. An hour later, their rescue toboggan brings Bartlett to the chopper. Although he has lost this round, Bartlett plans to challenge the mountain as soon as he recovers. Nature also strikes at those who never sought to challenge its power. Flash floods like this one in Australia can turn calm streets into death zones. Eleven thousand miles away, Residents of Tijuana, Mexico, lulled by years of drought, pay the price of nature's unexpected fury. Only one of these young men was saved. Here in Las Vegas, Nevada, cameras rush to cover a breaking news story. No one knows if anyone is pinned underneath this submerged jeep. Rescuers work quickly, 
even though they know it's unlikely anyone could survive underwater for the 20 minutes that have passed since the accident. Rescuers coordinate a desperate effort to flip over the vehicle. When they succeed, they make a dramatic discovery. A body is trapped face down under the steering wheel. There are no signs of life, no pulse, no heartbeat. The driver is flatlined. Still, the rescuers don't give up. They treat the victim as if he still has a chance. When he breaks free, Captain Perry Hort ignores his own safety and plunges in after it. Paramedics rush the lifeless body to University Medical Center where doctors connect it to an experimental machine that rewarms the blood. It has never been tried on a human being. Miraculously, the victim survives, thanks not only to the machine, but to the rescuer's refusal to abandon hope. You are watching the birth of the first tornado ever captured on film or video. Magically appearing out of nowhere, this graceful funnel hides its furious rage behind an eerily beautiful shape. But at every passing moment, it grows bigger, stronger, faster, and even more deadly. Swerving unpredictably, it spreads terror through Wichita, Kansas. There is literally nowhere to run or hide. A hundred times larger and more destructive than a tornado, Hurricane Aniki announces itself long before arriving to wreak its devastation on the Hawaiian Islands. In Florida, Hurricane Andrew kills 32 people, leaves 160,000 others homeless, and racks up $25 billion of destruction. It is the costliest disaster in U.S. history. But disaster knows no boundaries. When gale force winds build heavy swells just off the South Korean coast, a local cameraman records nature's fury. Giant waves rise from the ocean and attack the port of Pusan. The waves turn ugly, battering freighters and trapping sailors on board before they have a chance to escape. One sailor takes a desperate gamble to save his life. A surging wave slams him against the wall of iron. A second man leaps, and the sea pulls him down into the deadly wash. A third man remains on board the sinking ship. 
If it goes down, the suction will pull him under as well. But if he leaps into the churning water, he faces the fate of his drowned partners. The camera captures his desperate decision. Fortunately, the rescuers don't let him down, and for his courage, he is rewarded with his life. In the Bering Sea, an ocean of ice traps the Alaskan monarch. A Coast Guard chopper rescues all the crew, except the chief engineer and captain, who hope to save their crippled ship. Their cause is hopeless, but when the men decide to abandon ship, it's now too late. The engineer manages to claw up on top of the twisting ice, but the monarch's captain slips into the ocean depths, pinned beneath the shifting, grinding blocks of ice. His engineer reaches safety. While underwater, the drowning captain pushes weakly at the stubborn ice to find a breathing hole. Somehow he emerges. Thanks to his rescuers, the captain manages to escape certain death. In Knoxville, Tennessee, a bank robbery turns pursuing police officers into unexpected rescuers. Ex-convict Jesse Castro Adams, heavily armed, is the suspect. News cameras are on scene for a drama that is about to unfold as the suspect has the entire neighborhood under siege. Police attempt to end the standoff peacefully, but Adams opens fire from the barricaded house. The immediate mission of the Knoxville police and the FBI is not only to keep the gunmen at bay, but to move neighbors out of harm's way. Officer Richard G. Marino is hit twice by gunfire. His fellow Knoxville officers, along with FBI agents, put themselves at grave risk as they attempt to rescue him. With Adams still barricaded, the SWAT team prepares for what it hopes will be its final assault. But smoke grenades and tear gas fail to force Adams from his well-fortified position. Defying all reason, Adams resumes his reign of terror. Then suddenly, an unexpected turn of events. Adams comes out, but with his gun pointed at his heart, threatening to kill himself. A Knoxville police marksman takes aim, not to kill, but to save. With split-second timing, he fires. <laughs> FBI and local police have ended Adams' four-hour standoff without a single fatality. Sometimes an officer must walk a fine line between apprehending a suspect and saving a life. That dilemma rises again in Brooklyn, New York, where a freelance photographer records a troubled man challenging the police to a shootout. Officers below negotiate with him. 
but he taunts police to fulfill his own death wish. Once again, officers switch gears from capturing a suspect to rescuing a suspect. An NYPD sharpshooter takes aim. And his aim is true. Had it not been for the sharpshooter, the man's death wish might have come true. In Sacramento, news cameras cover this incredible drama live as a group of gang members hold an entire store hostage. Suddenly there is a gunshot and a hostage goes down. Police soon find out that the victim has agreed to be shot in the leg in exchange for his freedom. All he must do is deliver his captor's message to the police and the media. As the wounded man crawls to safety, a SWAT team enters the rear of the building. They hide in a storage room in contact with their commander via radio. Police learn that the four suspects are immigrants from Southeast Asia and are deeply troubled by their problems assimilating in the U.S. They claim they are on a suicide mission to call attention to their gang and to their problem. Inside, the suspects select which hostages are to be executed. Meanwhile, a deputy meets the gang's demand for a bulletproof vest. The gunmen tether a young woman with a cord and order her to retrieve the vest. A sniper's bullet misses its target and triggers an explosive reaction. Instantly, the gunman opens fire on his bound victims. Deputies burst in from the rear of the store, shooting to kill. Officers drag the tethered woman to safety, while inside, the SWAT team completes their bloody mission. In the tragic aftermath, three hostages perish. Eleven are wounded. Three teenage gunmen die in the exchange of gunfire. But the rescue effort has saved 37 innocent lives. In the next real-life drama, cameras from a local Salt Lake news station record the dramatic action as it happens. The suspect, Jorge Santiago, has taken his estranged wife, Gloria Quinones, as hostage. Now he threatens to kill her. He has already wounded her best friend. Police try to keep Santiago calm until a trained hostage negotiator can arrive. Before the negotiator gets there, Santiago forces their hand. He shoots Gloria twice. Police respond with a hail of bullets. A medevac chopper rushes the grievously wounded Gloria to a nearby hospital where doctors save her life. Sometimes the camera not only captures the story, but becomes part of the story. That's the case with Mike Silva, a TV news helicopter pilot who joins the Denver police force in pursuit of an armed robber. As he flees, the suspect loses control of his escape vehicle. Now he's forced to run on foot. In radio contact with the police, Mike Silva plays an increasingly crucial role. 
the suspect searches frantically for a means of escape. He encounters two potential hostages. The suspect allows the woman to leave, but forces her elderly father to drive. The police and Silva know how dangerous this man is. While fleeing the scene of the crime, he has already killed Denver detective Robert Wallace. In a moment of truth, Pilot Silva makes a bold decision. He steps aside from his role of observer and takes on the role of hero. Risking his life, he tries to block the escaping suspect with his chopper. As police close in, the suspect refuses to give up. Incredibly, the hostage is unharmed. Thanks to the heroic efforts of Mike Silva, a life is saved. In this sequence, an amateur photographer captures a shocking turn of events. Phoenix fireman Jeff Griffin is about to experience every fireman's worst fear. The roof begins to give. Just as they reach their comrade, the roof opens up and swallows another victim. Disaster seems inevitable, but the firefighters forge ahead. All of the firefighters emerge safely from what seemed to be a certain fiery death. Cameras now focus on the site of a burning apartment building. As flames devour this Indianapolis apartment, the firefighters are stretched so thin that even the fire marshal, Daniil Banks, must pitch in. High atop a ladder, he grabs a woman through the billows of smoke. What appears to be a routine ladder rescue suddenly goes wrong. Both Banks and the woman survive with minor injuries. In the firefighter's world, survival is the only benchmark of success. An apartment fire rescue is dangerous enough, but a high-rise fire is even more so. All too often, this is the dilemma facing the firefighters of New York City. Here, smoke and flames trap Jose Gallegos, 11 stories above downtown Manhattan. The city's elite rescue one unit is called in. They determine that there is only one rescue that will work. Coming down from the roof, not up from the ground. Firefighter Patrick Barr is slowly lowered down to the victim. But once Barr reaches Gallegos, they cannot pull him and the victim up, and the rope is too short to reach the ground. As Barr dangles with only a precarious grip on Gallegos, both their lives literally hang in the balance on a one-half-inch nylon rope. Holding on for dear life, Barr lets go of the rope with one hand and cracks open a window. Mm -hmm. 
Immediately, he gets the attention of the firefighters on that floor. Within moments, they act. They lean far out the window, trying to hook the swinging rope. At last, they succeed. When a troubled man decides to leap from a 10-story building, a freelance cameraman is there to capture the drama. New York City's Emergency Services Unit drills constantly for these operations, but every suicide alert is different and every second counts. First, the ESU officers surround and contain the would-be jumper. Come on, talk to me. I can't get down now. I'm like you. Talk to me. Then begins the most difficult and dangerous phase keeping the victim calm and then coaxing him back to safety. The crowd below callously urges the depressed man to jump, adding more danger to the moment. The ESU sense that the crowd might get their wish. The suicidal man seems determined to end his life. The officers try one last time to coax him off the ledge, but time and options are running out. Officer Bob Steinman feels that a more aggressive move is necessary, even if it means risking his own life. In our final sequence, the camera is simply there to shoot a documentary for Hawaii Electric. The big man lowering the helicopter hook is Vietnam vet Warren Amaral, affectionately known as Tiny. The helicopter pilot is Steve Cox, who flew choppers in Vietnam. What starts as a routine lift suddenly turns into terror as the chopper malfunctions. The machine traps him underwater. Tiny and his crew rush to Steve's aid. The alarm system warns that it could explode at any moment. Afraid that the chopper may blow any minute, other crew members keep their distance. Despite imminent danger, Tiny and another crew member won't give up. The crash has nearly severed the pilot's arm. He's losing critical amounts of blood and going into shock. If he remains trapped, he will soon die. But Tiny refuses to let a fellow vet perish like this, after all they've been through together. Incredibly, Tiny lifts the 1,600-pound chopper. Tiny and his crew cover the pilot to keep him warm. The paramedics fly the patient to the hospital, where he undergoes successful surgery. In this program, we have witnessed fires, floods, freak accidents, and large-scale disasters. But in our final scene, a single man's heroism is caught on camera.
Now, stay tuned for previews of more exciting home videos and a chance to order your very own exclusive Cops gear. It's the show that started it all. Cops Too Hot for TV. See for the first time ever what the network censors held back from the award-winning Fox TV series. It's gritty, graphic, and outrageous real-life footage from the mean streets of America. You've seen cops before, but never like this. Cops Too Hot for TV. Experience the original for yourself. Once just wasn't enough, so it's back to the streets with Cops Too Hot for TV, Volume 2. It's even more of the humorous, bizarre, violent, and explosive action that the censors wouldn't let you see until now. Cops Too Hot for TV, Volume 2, C, is believing. Climb into the driver's seat with cops in hot pursuit. It's high-speed chases and non-stop action as real-life cops go after fleeing criminals. And now, you can ride shotgun. Cops in hot pursuit. It's a thrill-a-minute ride you'll never forget. It's real crime and real captures with cops caught in the act. See what happens when suspects get caught red-handed while committing the crime. Dangerous takedowns. Crooks in hiding. Adrenaline-charged confrontations. It's wall-to-wall -wall excitement that will leave you breathless. Cops caught in the act. It's real, raw, and riveting. Now, here's your chance to own official Cops gear. Cops gear is available from your favorite retailer's cop shop or directly from Cops the store. First up, the official cop short sleeve t-shirt. This extra large 100% heavyweight cotton tee is jet black with the cop's logo emblazoned on the front. Bring home the exclusive cop's t-shirt for only $16.95. Stay warm cop style with our official cop sweatshirt. This classic black sweat is made from a warm, comfortable cotton blend with the cop's logo prominently featured on the front. It's a roomy extra large and is available now for only $28.95. Top off your cop's look with our official cop's baseball cap. This high quality cap has an adjustable band for fit and comfort and has the cop's logo embroidered on the front. The cop's baseball cap is available from Cops the Store for only $16.95. Start your day off right with our official Cops Coffee Mug. This sleek 11-ounce ceramic mug is great for hot and cold drinks. Use it at home or on the job, and at only $7.95, they make a great gift. Now you can chill out with the official Cops Drink Cozy. It keeps drinks frosty cold up to three times longer. And, of course, it features the bold Cops logo on both sides. The Cops Cozy is available now, and it's only $4.95. Light up the night with the official Cops Lighter. It's a jet black classic style lighter with the Cops logo in white on the front. Get your own Cops Lighter now for only $5.95. Next up, the stylish Cops Ashtray. It's made from black glass and features the Cops logo in the center. The official Cops Ashtray is only $6.95 from Cops the Store. Finally, try your hand at Cops the Game. It's a party game unlike anything you've ever played. This unique game combines fact, fun, and strategy as you patrol the mean streets of any town USA. You win by making split-second decisions about criminal acts, law enforcement history, infamous drug busts, and Hollywood crimes. You'll have hours of fun, and it's only $29.95 from Cops the Store. Real and...
Entertainment is proud to present the amazing video collection. Real Life Rescues. Spectacular natural disasters. Shocking tragic accidents. And it's all caught on camera. Watch in awe as dramatic gripping action and events unfold, all captured on tape. You won't want to miss a minute of this no-holds-barred video. Be an eyewitness to blazing infernos, air show mishaps, and other do-or-die disasters. These graphic images will be etched in your mind forever. The Amazing Video Collection Volume 1, caught on camera, the ultimate in reality video. The second chapter in the Amazing Video Collection unfolds with life against death. You won't believe your eyes as we take you around the world to experience one of the most riveting collections of real-life drama ever caught on tape. There are no reenactments, no actors, just real people facing extraordinary situations. Lives hang in the balance with dangerous rescues, police shootouts, the wrath of nature, and real-life heroes fighting to save lives. The Amazing Video Collection Volume 2, Life Against Death. It's real-life drama you'll never forget.